to our second um, sub up to webinar um, we received a lot of positive feedback of after our first webinar um, so we decided to host more of these sub up to webinars um, we were a full house during the first webinar it seemed to be a few people less um, this week um, but it's great that um, that you are all attending so thank you very much all right, so today's agenda, um, this, I'm going to provide a very short feedback about SABAP2, uh, basically three slides. And after that, uh, we have our main presentation, where Nell from Bertlasser will talk to us about um, setting a Bertlasser and logging data on Bertlasser. We are also going to try and have a, a live um, presentation. Um, I hope that I can connect my phone to the computer and we'll see how it works. Um, but it should all be fine um, when we get there. All right, so as I said, first of all, a short feedback about um, SABAP2. So in the beginning of, um, of one of the aims of SABAP2 is to monitor changes in bird distribution over time. Um, and in order to do that, uh, we want to ask atlases to atlas as many pen tests as possible each year. We have therefore at the beginning of the year set a target that we want to at least four, 5,300 pen tags in 2019. So quite a lot of pen tags, but we thought it's a realistic target. We are currently doing extremely well and we've at least over 2,800 pen tags um, up to now. Um, that is about 53% of the target and we're already 50% in the year, so, so we're keeping up. So it's going to become increasingly difficult to find um, new pen tags, not at least in 2019. But please have a look at the coverage map um, on SABAP2, the SABAP2 website, go to the coverage map, select 2019, and please have a look at and uh, look for pen tags near you which have not been at least in 2019, and then go and try and submit a card for those pen tags. We will appreciate that. Also then on the SABAP2 website, um, we want to remind you that we have these different challenges, regional challenges, there's a number of them listed on the SABA2 website. Um, these challenges each has a champion, could be an organization, such as a bird club or a person, um, would then coordinate the Atlas in effort and report on progress in the challenge area. I want to ask all Atlas to please have a look at these challenges and if you live in or nearby a challenge area or will travel through such an area, please have a look for pen tags with less than four or seven cards, cards and submit a full protocol card. The first aim of all these challenges is to have at least four cards um, in, um, yeah, at least four cards for, for each of the pen tags in such a challenge area. So please go to the website, click on challenges, and have a look at the challenges um, that we have in SABAP2. Then lastly, um, Michael Brooks um, created a new menu item on our website. On the right hand side of the list of menu items called resources. Um, we are busy uploading documents to this um, site. So one of the things that Sanjo and the librarian of the FITS did is to create a list of all the publications that have been written using SABAP1 and SABAP2 data and this has been uploaded in the last week or two. Um, so you can see that that under bibliography We've uploaded some documents and also sort of things to download. You can also get links to videos, including the webinar videos of there, and also links um, to important websites and so on you can see under the links menu. So please go and have a look. Um, we will continuously um, upload documents to this, um, to this link or to the resources um, page. So please come back regularly and see um, what, the, um, what you can find there. Then just lastly, just a reminder that we set up two websites. Um, then also we've got an uh, email address for queries, sabap2 at birdlife.org.za. So if you've got any queries about sabap2, please use this email address and we will try and respond as so, um, so quickly as possible. And then also we've got a Facebook page uh, where we regularly post updates, but also Atlas's um, update uh, or provide regular updates about of publish about um, the Atlas in trips and so on. So please have a look there. All right, so that brings us to the main event of the day, and that is about um, Bertlasser tips and tricks and logging our data. This will be the first of two Bertlasser um, webinars. The 
first one will just be about um, logging data, um, but the next one will then be about logging data for SABAP2, and then also how to submit your data to SABAP2. But today, in the limited time available, we are just going to talk about how to log our data. So, Henk, I would first of all like to welcome you and thank you for making time to talk to us today. Um, um, thanks for um, attending. So, Henk, my first question to you before we start with the live demo is, um, I get a lot of atlases that ask me um, why you developed the BirdLess application. I know it is really hard work. Um, people think it's easy to develop an app like this, but it's really not. So, why have you decided to develop the BirdLess application? It's a, it's quite a long story, so I'm just going to keep it short by saying that um, I eventually met like-minded people and we decided to develop a free quality mobile app that will become the go-to tool for birders that want to contribute to conservation and research efforts like uh, Subop2 and the Atlas um, initiative um, for them to keep record of their sightings anywhere in the world. Um, and easily share these sightings information with a community via emails or WhatsApp and or social media. That's it. All right, fantastic. And I think we, we said it last time also. Thank you very much for, for developing the app. It certainly changed Atlasing for us also. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> Then um, maybe you could just tell us where we can get more information about BirdLasser. We're going to share a lot of information today, but you already got a lot of information or places where people can get information about BirdLasser on the web and so on. Yeah, so the, we've got a FAQ, a Frequently Asked Questions section on our website. I've put the link there. It's in the presentation. It's right at the bottom of our webpage. It's a help FAQ um, um, link. If you click on that, we try and update it as frequently as possible. If we see there's a typical trend being developed in, in, in the type of questions we get on our support mail. Um, we also have our own YouTube channel. Um, on the YouTube channel, uh, you can see videos we've uploaded over the years, even links to other videos like those you've done. And um, I can even tell people if you just go into Google and you say bird last and you type in the problem you're having, you will most likely come across a link or page somewhere that will give you um, some assistance. Fantastic. So there's a lot of information there. So please go and visit if you've got more questions. All right. So at this point, Tom, I'm going to try and connect my phone to my laptop. So Inc, I'm going to ask you to start um, talking. And um, so we, Inc is now going to take us through a presentation. Um, so if you start, then I'm going to quickly um, connect my phone and so on, please. Okay. So for all of you that are online, I hope most of you have your phones with you. You've got BirdLasser open. I'm going to start off by saying that the most effective way of searching for species also depends on how you've set up your languages and your taxonomic authority. So for that, let's quickly go to settings. So I hope most of you know where to get it. If you're on an iPhone, it's at the bottom. There's a link that says settings. If you're on an Android phone, there's a little three horizontal lines in the top left-hand corner. You tap that, you'll see your menu options. One of them settings going there. Then go and have a look um, and see if you can find taxon or taxonomy. Make sure that's set to IOC. That is what we in South Africa uh, roughly follow. Um, then on languages, I've set my primary language to English, South Africa. People ask me, why do I do that? Not English IOC. It's because I still like referring to a black shouldered kite as a black shouldered kite and not a black winged kite. There's a few other examples like greenback heron versus striated heron. So until we as South Africans haven't formally changed those names, I, um, we, we in Bethesda will keep those names if you select South Africa. Secondary so, languages so, of um, Ben, can I just, um, can you see the screen on um, my phone screen? Yes, I can. All right, right. Okay, so you go in the general there. Am I right, Ernst? No, not general. <laughs> okay, there we go. Regions and languages. 
So you've got your region of Southern Africa, taxonomy is IOC, English South Africa, secondary language, you've got English South Africa as well. I recommend you change it to Afrikaans for this demonstration. And you'll see once I start showing you how to search for species, why I pick a language like Afrikaans. And then secondary is scientific IOC, so I've got the Latin names in there as well. Okay, and then when all that is done, I uh, just want to refer to a few other things. Um, a lot of bird lassie users also contribute to eBird or Cornell University. You can obviously do that simultaneously while you're just doing your normal birding and atlasing. You can also export your data and then submit to eBird. Now I'm saying that because eBird also wants the, the number of, of a species you have observed. So it's not just good enough to say I've seen a Harida, you need to say I've seen two Haridas. So we've brought in a feature called Quick Capture. Um, if you enable it, every time you log a species, there's a little pop-up that asks you how many of them have you seen or heard, and you can quickly type it in. Um, then the, lastly, there's also a setting there if you're on Atlas, so just to switch Atlasing on by default, so that you can, every time you create a trip card, is already in Atlasing mode. So uh, Ernst, if you can quickly just show us how to do the quick capture. Um, I think it is under eBird. Just try that. No. Um, okay. I can't say I've used it often. There's enable count mode there yeah. on that screen. So you click that. And as I said, don't do it for this demonstration purposes, but it's for those of you that are interested to log the number of, of those you have seen. It's actually quite useful when you do a car count or a quack count. Okay, and that's it. Thank you. Let's get to the main screen of the app. And um, it's important to note that all records co is contained in a trip card. Um, so to create a trip card, just click on the plus icon, similar in iPhone. There you go. Type in your trip name. Now, so people always ask me, so what do I use for a trip name? And I tell them whatever makes sense for you. You get people that will name a trip card 2018 and log all their sightings, no matter where they sit in, in that card. Um, so they've got a nice record of what they've seen in 2018. If you like me, I call my trip card typically home and I just append something like June 2019. So I know it's anything, whether it's atlasing or not, in my home vicinity, whatever that may be. Maybe the next, the adjoining three pentads or so. Um, what is important though, is that as soon as the number of records in a trip card exceeds, let's say somewhere between 400, if you're on an older phone, the list, your phone becomes slow. The, it becomes unresponsive, the app. If you have one of the latest phones on the market, let's say an iPhone 10, you probably can go up to about two and a half thousand before you, you see the effect of this large list. So my rule of thumb is keep a list that's less than a thousand records and you will be okay. So in this instance, Ernst is going to create a, a card called webinar as an example. Below it, you can see you can switch atlasing on or off. Um, for most of you, probably atlas is, you know, switch it on, gives you um, your screen. I mean, Ernst is on map view now, and you can immediately see the pentad lines. In the top right-hand corner, you toggle it, and you see the list view. Okay, that shows it looks like a little, yeah, three dotted, uh, three horizontal lines uh, or a map icon. Okay, that's how you toggle. Um, I'm going to move on and, and get to the, the nitty gritty of logging. So as per the instructions on the screen, it says click the lock button to log a record. So let's do that. Let's click the lock but, uh, button immediately you are presented with a list of species. In the top left-hand corner, it says S&A. It says it's Southern Africa. You can write there and then also change to another region. If you're elsewhere in the world and you maybe move between Southern and, e and Eastern Africa and you don't get the species on the list that you were hoping for, maybe switching to another region will, get, will present you with that species. Um, so just quickly, a few comments, general comments on logging. The objective here is to get to the desired species to show in the top five or six in the list. So the idea is to 
enter the letters as few as possible and have the correct species listed so you can tap on it and log it. What is important is you do not have to use the exact spelling. In other words, you don't have to start the name of the bird in capital letters. You also don't need to use any special characters like a hyphen or an apostrophe. If in, in Afrikaans, you don't need, need to do a deal taken or a copy. So if you want to write Kwefuel, you can just go K-W-E. Okay. Uh, next, a tip is to think of unique words in that species name. Uh, for instance, if you go with Grey Go Away Bird, there are very few birds that have a way in its name. In Southern Africa, there's only one. So if you're going to type in a way or just way, you'll immediately see it. Some other ones that are quite easy is fairy. There's only a fairy prion and a fairy flycatcher. Ox for the ox peckers, bok for bok makiri, and obviously mouse for mouse birds. So always think of what's unique in the name and start with that. So obviously it's not required to start a name from the first letter. Next, once you see that list of names in front of you, you will notice in Android there's what is supposed to be an icon to the right hand side that looks like an ear. You're listening to something. So by tapping on a species name, you will log it as if you've seen it. It will record it in the database as I've seen a bok mockery. If you tap on the ear, it's if you would like to record it as heard. I heard this bok mockery and I didn't see it. On iPhone, you don't see the ear icon. You have to press your finger down and slide that tile to the left to reveal buttons behind the name. One of them would say, yeah, and you tap that and that species will be logged as heard. I hope that is clear. Okay, now for the tricks of the trade. The idea we've had with this search algorithm, which is by now you've realized it's quite unorthodox. It's not your typical left to right and alphabetical sorting. It's based on a weighting formula. In other words, the characters you use, how often and how many of them are in the combination of languages you've selected in your language settings. So as an example, oh, just by the way, I also want to see the idea is that you only use three or four letters. You only tap three or four times and then get to the correct species. Now, a lot of you might think, how is that possible? So here we go. Here's an example. So if you log, like I do in English, you often see a lot of sparrows. It could be sparrow larks, you know, real sparrows, like a house sparrow, or even sparrow hawks. If you type in sparrow, you get a lot of them. It's still difficult to get to the one you want. So I've got my phone set in Afrikaans as well, and I just go M-O-S-S, -S, moss, for mossy, and it immediately shows me all the real sparrows. Next one, R-B-E for barbet. So I focused on the R, the B, and the E in the words barbet. It's a nice, unique combination of letters, and it brings up all the barbets. There's also a nice one called Mori. For most of you that use bird as you probably refer to red wing starlings by now as Mori's. You type in M-O-R-I, and you get the red wing starling. Don't know if you've picked up how come that is. Have a look at its scientific name and you'll see M-O-R-I is a unique combination of letters in its scientific name. That's why it brings it up. And then lastly, you can also do the same for a group like P-I-G, pigs, for all the pigeons. So it's difficult to memorize all these things and work it out for yourselves. So what I have as a general rule for people is if it's a multi-syllable or multi-word um, species, type the first two letters, space, first two letters, space. As an example, I want to lock African olive pigeon. I forgot to click P-I-G for all the pigeons. So I go A-F space O-L space P-I for African olive pigeon. Same with African black oyster catcher or African black duck. A-F space B-L. African black and you get oyster catcher, duck, swift, or red-headed weaver, R-E-H-E-W-E. -E -E. Obviously, it's more than the three or four characters you'd like to type in, 
But it's just a nice trick if you've forgotten what the short code is. Use the first two letters, space, first two letters, space, first two letters. Then another trick is if there are double characters next to each other in a name. A good example is Little Rush Wobbler. So instead of going L-I for little, I go T-T. It's a nice unique combination. And immediately all the littles, everything that is little or build will pop up. So I go T-T space or U for Rush or W-A for Wobbler. It doesn't matter. <laughs> same goes for Lesser Swamp Wobbler or Lesser Striped Swallow. They're the same. I go SS for that lesser. And then SW, either for Swamp or for Swallow, they'll both pop up. So it's a nice shortcut there. Another common bird that's quite a tricky one is LL space Q for red built quelia. Now for an example of how you can search cross languages, I like the African olive pigeon as an example. So I go African olive pigeon, I use AF for African space and then GE for geel back bos days. And it actually gets the African olive pigeon quicker than going with just the two first letters of the English names. Gray go away bird, if you've forgotten about the way, you go GR for gray and KW for quefo. And there's more examples like Little Rush Wobbler. You can go TT and KA for Fleissanger. I think you guys get the idea here with the combination of letters and how you can jump between um, languages even in the same search. Recently, we've been brought in a few other niceties. Um, these were requests from users. They're getting very clever. And they say, I just want to tap a two for anything that indicates a double or a two, like the twin spots, double, double banded sand grouse, for instance, or double collared, greater double collared, southern double collared sunbird. If you go two and it shows, and maybe you add another letter like, um, G for green twin spot. So two G and you'll, you'll get green twin spot. Same for three and three bandit. What we've also added is the ability to record by its call. Um, I do a lot of my birding by call. So I do know all these um, um, words we use like Victor for greater honey guide. And I so often used to type in Vic for greater honey guide and then I don't get greater honey guide and I don't go don't get why not. So we decided, you know what? Let's put in those words as part of the search engine. So if you now type Vic for Victor, you'll see Greater Honey Guide as well as Victor and Swabler. Bly for blind, and you'll get Gin Spot Batters. Three blind mice. And obviously, drink your beer, drink your beer, you get Orange River Franklin. So there are a few other hidden gems in there. I hope you guys can find them. I don't want to show them all here. If you have something that is a very common call that you use to identify a bird with, please share those. And if they're not in the app, I will definitely add them in there. Old names, we try and cater for previous or old name as far as we can. There's two examples. Back at my African olive pigeon example, go R-A-M for Ramarin. And um, Jim Nogene, Jim for African area hawk. There are quite a few others in the app as well. Okay, just off the bat, a few others um, not listed here. Something like Dikop for thick knees. I do D I K K for Dikopa that shows me all the thick knees. It's also quite a nice one, everyday one I use. There's also Z O S for Zostropos, all your white eyes. Z O S. And then my all-time favorite is Green Widupu and all the Widupus and Skimata Bulls, you just type in K-A-K -K and you get all the cockalash. Okay, now let's get to some interesting things that BirdLess allows you to do. Once you click log, the first item in the list is unidentified. So people ask me, why do we have it in there? And I say, well, you know what? A lot of us do birding in winter in the grasslands and you see all the bishops and why does very difficult to um, identify. So we take a photo, we post it on Facebook for the experts to identify. 
obviously you would have liked to add that record in your bid asset, but you didn't because you didn't know what it is. So what I tell people is you log a placeholder and you call it unidentified. It's exactly what happened. So and if you can log unidentified, there it is in the list. Um, you get home, you post your photo, and um, somebody tells you it's a yellow crown bishop. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? You tap on the little three dots on the right hand side, and you say edit observation. And now you see all the properties for that observation. Right at the top, it says unidentified. Now you go and change that unidentified to what you've seen. You click edit, you search again, yellow crown bishop, just go BIS for all the bishops. BISH maybe, and there you go, yellow crown bishop, and remember to save it. In iPhone, you just go out, there's no save button, and Android, there's a little pass mark in the top right hand corner, and there you see you've got your yellow crown bishop in your list. And you don't have to go and add this record after the fact once you got home. So it's quite easy to change something. What's also important is if you've logged something like a, a threatened species or one of our, 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 our species of concern um, and you have subscribed to a cause, you might want to show exactly where you have noticed or what have observed that species. So on the Kasha Pied Barbet, um, once you log it, like Ernst, it's logged. We seat it now at his home. But you know what? He wants to show he actually was at home, but he looked through his binos and saw it flying on the other side of the highway. So he goes to the location, he scrolls on the map, and then he places his finger down, not tap, you press down, and there's a pop up that says move observation. Now tap on the observation, and it moves that pin to the other side of the highway automatically updating the coordinates and again he moves it so here you can see how you can place something you've seen elsewhere maybe it's something you forgot to lock in your trip to kruger you go through your photos and you say oh my word here's the egyptian vulture i saw and i forgot to log it so now you log it at home and you worry oh my word people are going to think i saw it at home not a problem you say edit you scroll all the way to Kruger National Park where you saw it at Satara, you press down, and it will now record it as if you've seen it there. Also important in that example is you obviously didn't see it today at uh, 8 o'clock in the evening. You want to change it to 3 o'clock yesterday. You can change the date and time as well and change it to whatever you want. You'll notice a lot of other observations. In other words, for instance, how many you've seen, was the bird dead, it's... Um, gender was a part of a colony whatever makes sense for you and what you want to use your data for or who you ever want to share it with that's what you can do there okay remember to save it once you are done now on that note another way to do a placeholder is if you're back at the screen where you see the, your log button is to keep it in think about the days of a walkie-talkie you don't tap on the log you hold it in and it changes to recording. Now you can speak into the mic and you can say, because you're driving at hundred k's an hour down through the Karoo and you say, Karoo Koran on the right hand side of the road, about 50 meters in. As a matter of fact, there are two deep press. It will log an unidentified species. Yeah, no, sorry, we don't do voice recognition yet. But the unidentified record is in your list. And once you safely at your destination, you go to edit, scroll right down to the bottom, and there is your recording, audio file, and you can listen to what you've said. You might have 50 odd species or records, unidentified records as you drove down to your holiday home, and now you want to go update where you've seen your um, cranes and bustards and corons. So one by one, you go through your unidentified, listen to your recording, and update accordingly. You change it to blue crane and now you've got your blue crane. What is very important to note, that voice note does take up quite a lot of space on your phone. So what I recommend you do is after you've logged it, just go down and delete that recording and showing you how to delete the recording. Okay. It's also important to note that we don't back up those recordings. By now, most of you probably know, we always back up all your data to the cloud. So if you do lose your phone and you download it and you log in again, all your data just magically appears again. Those recordings won't appear again. We do not back up any media. We only back up the, um, the text. Okay. Um, 
let's move on to the next point. Let me see what else I've had in store. Another way of report of logging a species after the fact. So Ernst have logged a blue crane. He saw it just outside of three sisters. And then he suddenly realized, you know what? He was so happy about the three, about the blue cranes that he completely forgot about the career Koran right next to them. So instead of going about it and logging this unidentified and then moving the pin, because you know it was right next to the blue cranes, that point in time, that location, you can duplicate that record by clicking on the menu item that says duplicate observation. On iPhone, you again move the tile, the name tile to the left and reveal a button behind the species name and you'll also see duplicate. Now what it's done is it's duplicated that record, it's another blue crane. We've just changed the seconds a few later but it's the same place, same time, effectively, same date. All you now need to do is change the name to Karua Koran or African Bond Outlet, and you can save it. So this is a nice way of capturing historical data. You've now seen the, the coolness of Birdless and you want to capture your historical data. So what I recommend to people is you've got your list of Satara in 1975, the 17th of April. You log one species and you move that via the location on the map to where you've seen it. Thereafter, you just duplicate, duplicate, change the name of the species. And there you build up a nice Satara list. Okay. Um, Want to see what else? And if you can go to map view. Now, this is a scenario which probably a lot of you have experienced before where you get poor GPS reception. That little GPS range in the bottom left of corner is probably amber or even red saying that your accuracy is out by thousands of meters. So for some other reason, your phone's not getting nice satellite reception. And people say, if I log something now, it logs it completely in the wrong place, even in the wrong pen tab. So here's a nifty way of logging it without clicking the log button. Now, unfortunately, this is only available on Android. So for the iPhone users, this is not possible. You scroll to where you want to log it on the map. You then press your finger down where you've seen it. And it'll give you that little green dot. Okay, and so scrolling, scrolling, presses his finger down. It says new observation. You click on new observation. And it'll log that record exactly there. Okay. Hope that's clear. So it's, this is specifically for scenarios where you've got bad reception out in the field, or if you also want to build a historical list and you want to quickly log that first record, you just scroll to where you want to be, press down with your finger and it'll log it exactly there. Okay, there you go. Um, let's see what else I've got here. Okay, Ernst, if you can go back to the list of species in list view, I also just wanted to show you that on a record, on the little menu item in list view, just on the three little dots to the right. So we've spoken about edit observation where you can change the name or any other properties. We've shown you how to duplicate. There's another one, delete observation. So you've logged something, you realized you've made a mistake and it's not just that you've missed ID and you can change the name. It's actually just incorrectly. It might have been a pocket log. You can just delete it here and the observation will be deleted. We obviously ask for confirmation. Are you sure you want to delete it? And you say delete. Now, believe it or not, a lot of people accidentally delete records or even trip cards. If enough time has elapsed since you have logged it, it would in all likelihood have backed up to our service. And people that know this will typically give us a quick call or a, a, a send us a mail and say, oh, I've accidentally deleted my trip card to the botanical gardens. Is there a way of retrieving it? We can go on our server, we can undelete it, and within seconds, it will be back on your phone. This obviously is only possible if that data managed to back up. Okay. Um, if I can come in here. Can you maybe explain to them why is my African Bart Owlet that I logged in Pretoria gray and not black than the other names? Yes, let's do that. Okay, so what Ernst has done is he's logged uh, in Africa Bart Owlet. Obviously, he's logged it where he's seated right now. That is in Pretoria. 
And what he probably also has is Gauteng, or somehow this area where he's in, wider Gauteng, Gauteng, as a life list region. So he went on the life list and he selected Gauteng. He wants to track his Gauteng lifers. That silver or gray means it's a lifer for one of your regions. And if he knows he set up Gauteng, clearly it's the first time he logged a bought outlet in Gauteng. And that's why it's silver. Now what he's done is he's locked an Egyptian vulture. And that is yellow or gold. That is more than just a regional lifer. That's an all-time lifer. Clearly, um, Ernst has never seen or at least logged an Egyptian vulture and bird lasser. And it comes up in that bright yellow, indicating this is a lifer. If Ernst was to log another Egyptian vulture right now, Egypt vulture it is not gold because it's the second one he's seen so it's not a life anymore so the color coding gives you an indication of a lifer i know a lot of people say well i have seen it it's just the first time i've logged in, in bird lasser well that's how we're going to get you to log all your historical data in bird lasser so that you can still get that kick if you see that yellow text on your screen knowing it's a lifer it's also nice if you've got regional region set up and you see the, the gray and you realize, wow, this is new for Kruger Park or for Gauteng or for Western Cape. Anything else, Ernst? Um, Anything on the, on the chat that we need to talk about? I'm sorry, I haven't kept track of the chat. I'm blogging like mad. So um, <laughs> I think um, we will check there. But uh, can I just quickly ask, let's quickly just show them the life list. And I think then we need to end there. We're running out of time. But can we just quickly okay. show the life list? Okay, let's quickly talk about the life list. Again, if you go to your settings, you'll see there's a life list option. So if you click on life list, um, and um, list there, just read there in the top, it says life list, and then it says all. So this is all records logged anywhere in the world for all time. If he clicks on the all dropdown, you can see you can sort by year. So what's nice is here, if you go 2018, it'll tell you how many lifers you've recorded in that area, let's say Gauteng, um, for that year. You can also add additional areas. You click on the little filter on the bottom right-hand corner. In iPhone, it's a... Uh, um, um, what do you call it, uh, a, a plus icon. And you can go select another area for which you'd like to keep a life list for. Just again, the more of these you add, the slower your phone or device will become. Um, and obviously the older your device, the slower it will become and um, the less of these you can really add. You have to realize that every time you log something, it goes and compares, it does a GIS lookup to see if in which of these it falls in and it allocates it. So it's quite processing intensive. So as a rule of thumb, don't have more than two or three of these. Okay, so Ernst is now loading something. Obviously, he's going to be very busy because he's going to go, Ernst probably has roughly 100,000 um, records on his phone. <laughs> the program now needs to go through all of those records and now decide which of those are lifers in this um, 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 location he selected. Now, what's cool about the life lift, other than showing you what your total count is for that area, so if you go in it, into it, you click on Gauteng and you go see what those species are, you can scroll to one because somebody might ask you, where in the Kruger National Park did you see that bell's fishing owl? Now, you can't remember exactly where because it's been 30 years ago. So you can go into your life list, you search for Pals Fishing Owl. And once you tap on it, yeah, there's Pied Abbasid. You can see the trip card name was Murrayvale. You click on Murrayvale trip card. It'll open that trip card and you can exactly see where you've seen it. You can go to the map and tell him this is exactly where I've seen that. What's it? A black heron. Okay, so it's a nice way of quickly getting to a record. I know a lot of people, they say they struggle, they've got hundreds of trip cards, and now they need to go search where they saw that bird. So if you know of a specific bird, a specific date, um, rather go through your life list to find it. 
some other nice things in the life list features, you can sort alphabetically, you can sort by the number of times you've seen a species and you can sort it by the number of that species. In other words, your last life at the top or your life, last life at the bottom. You can also export that list. A lot of you keep your life list on Excel spreadsheet. So if you click export, you can take all your life list and export it in that order with all the details into a CSV file, which you can email to yourself and then pull into Excel. You can update your personal Excel um, database. I hope that is clear. All right, Hank. Okay. I think um, that's, um, I just thought maybe for the last thing, um, I was just thinking about um, going back to map view, um, just remind people that if they click on, uh, now my, Okay, while you're doing that, Ernst, I just want to, I see a few questions. I'm quickly going to say somebody's um, asking me, will we add other national parks? Yes, in time we'll add other national parks, other countries, other provinces. The idea is to make it the proper globally um, used uh, application. So we will in time add those. Obviously, every time we add that, those uh, KML or shape files do take up a lot of space. So a lot of people still use very old phones. It will make their phones slow and will make the app bigger. So as time goes along and we know people getting um, um, more of the later phones, the, 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 the more powerful phones, we'll start adding more of those. Quickly, something else is EEZ, something like economical something zone. Yes, it is. It means that 200 nautical miles offshore is included. So your pelagic trips are then included. Um, somebody's asking, how do you submit your logs? Well, that we'll cover when we do another course on bird lesser and um, sub up. Yeah, those are the quick ones I've got in there. Okay. So, Ink, thank you very much. Cornelius, Sanjo, everybody. Thank you very much. Thanks, That's then. been the end of our session. Um, but as I said, we'll keep the webinar open for another five minutes or so if you want to, to post any questions or comments. Thank you, everybody, and enjoy the rest of the evening.